I want to now explain and work problems out where we're adding and subtracting rational expressions. If you watched the video where I talked about how to find the lowest common denominator, I explained briefly the difference between solving an equation and simplifying an expression. So, here's one of the first problems we're going to solve. Although, actually, I shouldn't say solve. I say here's one of the first problems we're going to simplify because this is an expression. There is no equal sign. If there's no equal sign, you have an expression. What we're going to do with this is we're going to simplify it, which basically means, in the simplest sense, we're going to try and subtract these two fractions. Now let me go ahead and in the last the video on LCDs I did this but let me just do it again in case you didn't watch that. If we were revert back to when you first learned to add and subtract fractions you may have had a problem like this. Three-fifths minus one-half. All right subtracting two fractions. I think most of you probably remember how to subtract two fractions like this. The first thing you have to do is get a common denominator. In this case, we're looking for the smallest number that 5 goes into and that 2 goes into. In this case, it would be 10. <clears throat> now, most of you can probably in your head convert these two fractions. But I want to show you, in effect, what you were really doing because in a few minutes it will become important for the problems we're going to do. <clears throat> Basically what we're going to do is we need to take that fraction 3 fifths and I need to convert that denominator from 5 to 10. The way I can do that is to multiply the 5 by 2, but since I cannot change the value of this fraction, I have to also multiply the numerator by 5. Because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1, so I'm really not changing the value of this fraction. I'm just changing the way it looks. So 3 fifths becomes 6 tenths. 3 fifths, in effect, is the same as 6 tenths. It just has a different denominator. I do the same thing for the second fraction. In this case, I need to go from 2 to 10. To do that, I multiply by 5, but then I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. And when I do that, 1 half becomes 5 tenths. And now I can subtract these two fractions because I have the same denominator. So you write the common denominator and then you subtract the numerator. 6 minus 5 is 1. So 3 fifths minus 1 half is 1 tenth. We're going to do the same exact kind of thing for these rational expressions. So let me write down the steps. First, if possible, have to factor anything possible. The second thing is, you look at all the denominators and we have to find the lowest common denominator. And if you're not sure how to do that, there's another video on simply finding the LCDs and rational expressions. And then the third step, convert fractions so that they have that lowest common denominator. Fourth step is now that they all have the same denominator, we can add or subtract whatever the problem calls for. And then sometimes after you add or subtract, you can cancel some things out and reduce to lowest terms. Oftentimes you can't reduce, but sometimes some things actually will cancel out. So there are the steps. So let's go back to this original problem. I will rewrite it here. 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x. First step, factor. Nothing factors. The second step, find the LCD. I taught you on the last video to find the LCD. You write the first denominator and you look at the second. And if it's not included yet in the LCD, you include it. I don't have an X, so I need one. There's my LCD. 
Now I'm going to convert the fraction so that each fraction has the common denominator. So I look at this first fraction. My denominator right now is x minus 1. However, I want it to be x times x minus 1. What do I need to do to convert x minus 1 to x times x minus 1? I need to multiply by x, but of course I have to multiply the top by x so I don't change the actual fraction. So that first fraction goes from 1 over x minus 1 to x over x minus 1. I do the same thing for the second fraction. I need to go from x to my LCD, which is x times x minus 1. What I need to multiply this x by, I need to multiply by x minus 1, but I have to do the top also. So now this becomes x minus 1 over x times x minus 1. Now that I have a common denominator, I can go ahead and subtract these fractions. And once again, you write the common denominator, and then you take and you subtract the numerators. x minus x minus 1. The denominator, I'm done with that now, but the numerator I need to simplify. Let's get rid of these parentheses. In this case, it would be x minus x. So it's like this minus gets distributed to both terms inside. If you subtract a negative 1, that becomes plus 1 over my denominator. <clears throat> and then x minus x cancels out. So when you're finally finished with this, it simplifies down to 1 over x times x minus 1. All right, so that's the procedure that you just simply follow over and over again. Let's do a couple more examples. 8 over t plus 7 over 3t. All right, there's no factoring. I need to find the LCD. In this case, my first number is t. I notice my second the number is 3t. Well, I've already got a t, but I need the 3. So the LCD is going to be 3t. So this first fraction, to go from t to 3t, multiply the top and the bottom by 3. So this becomes 24 over 3t. For my second fraction, I need to go from 3t to 3t, which basically means the second fraction already has the LCD. It doesn't need to change. And now that I have the same denominator with both fractions, I can add these fractions. I write the common denominator and that 24 plus 7, which of course I can combine. So this ends up being 31 over 3t. Let's do another similar example, a little more involved. Here I'm actually going to have a couple different variables. 7 over 18a cubed b squared minus 2 over 9ab. I encourage you, if you think you know how to do this problem, you can just pause this video, try to work it out yourself, and then you can run this video and see if you get the same answer. So there's nothing to factor. The LCD I'm going to write down my first denominator, 18a cubed b squared. Now I go check my second denominator. First of all, I have a 9 here, but a 9 goes into 18. So the 9 and 18, the LCD would be 18, so I'm okay there. I need an a, but I have a cubed, so I'm covered there. I need a b, but I have b squared, I'm covered there. So there's my LCD. As it turns out, the first fraction does not need to change because it already has the LCD. However, the second fraction, I need to go from 9AB to 
a cubed b squared. How do I get to that? I have to multiply by 2 a squared b. And of course, I have to multiply top and the bottom. So now the second fraction becomes 4a squared b. And now I can go ahead and subtract these since I have the same denominator. So the denominator is 18a cubed b squared. And the numerator, 7 minus 4a squared b. And that does not reduce, so there's your answer. A little messy, but that is what it is. Let me just do a few more just to give you some practice. How about this one? 2x over x plus 4 plus 3x over x minus 7. And I'm going to put these denominators in parentheses. Nothing factors. LCD. I write down the denominator of my first fraction, x plus 4. I go to my second fraction. The denominator is x minus 7. I go here. I don't have an x minus 7 in my LCD. So I go ahead and stick it in there. So there's my LCD. So now I'm going to go convert my fractions. This first fraction has to go from x plus 4 to x plus 4 times x minus 7. To do that, I need to multiply the top and the bottom times x minus 7. So this first fraction becomes 2x times x minus 7 plus the second fraction has to go from x minus 7 has to go from x minus 7 to x plus 4 times x minus 7. What I need to do, I need to multiply by an x plus 4. So therefore, the second fraction becomes 3x times x plus 4 over my LCD. Now I can actually add these two fractions together. Here's my LCD. Now, I'm going to go ahead and multiply out these parentheses as I write this down to save a step. So if I distribute to 2x, I'd have 2x squared minus 14x plus, and then the second, 3x times x is 3x squared plus 12x. And now, I should combine like terms in my numerator. I have 5x squared minus 2x over my LCD. Now actually, someone you may think I should factor out an x, and I can factor out an x, although nothing's going to cancel, so actually I could just leave it like this. Alright, a few more examples. How about this one? And here we're going to have actually three fractions to, in this case, we're going to add them together. 15 over y squared plus 3y plus 2 over y plus 5 over y plus 3. First step is factor. In this case, I do have to factor. Look at this first denominator. y squared plus 3y. I can factor out a y. Just to save time, let me just mark this out and rewrite this as y times y plus 3. Now I have to find the LCD. Okay, I got three denominators. Let's write down the first denominator. y times y plus 3. <clears throat> I go to my second denominator. I need a y. I go to my LCD. I already have a y. So I'm good. I go to my third denominator. I need a y plus 3. I go to my LCD. I already have a y plus 3. So this is going to be my LCD. Now I have to go and convert all three fractions so that they have the LCD. This first fraction, I notice it already has the LCD. So I'm just going to simply rewrite the first fraction. The second fraction I need to go from y to y times y plus 3, which means I need to multiply the top and the bottom 
by y plus 3 in parentheses, so the second fraction becomes 2 times y plus 3 over y times y plus 3. And then the last fraction, I need to go from y plus 3 to my LCD, which is y times y plus 3, which means I can multiply the top and the bottom by y. So then the third fraction becomes 5y over y times y plus 3. Now I can add these together since they have the same denominator. The common denominator is y times y plus 3. And now I have 15. The second parenthesis, let me go and distribute out the 2. 15 plus 2y plus 6. Then the final fraction plus 5y. If I combine like terms in my numerator, I'll have... 7y, 2y plus 5y, plus 15 plus 6, plus 21, over y times y plus 3. And now here's a case where, if I look at that numerator, I can actually factor that. So I should go ahead and factor that and see if maybe something cancels out. And in this case, if I factor out the 7, 7 times y plus 3 over y times y plus 3. And now, if you remember how to cancel, if you have identical factors in the top and the bottom, they cancel. The y plus 3s are identical factors. By the time we're all done, this ends up being 7 over y. All right, last problem. One more, three fractions t over t plus 3 plus 4t over t minus 3 minus 18 over t squared minus 9. First step is the factor. t squared minus 9 is the difference of squares. Let me just mark that out and rewrite it as t plus 3 times t minus 3. Now hopefully you get to the point when you find the LCD, you can begin to just look at these. I've got a t plus 3, a t minus 3, and a t plus 3, t minus 3. Hopefully it's pretty clear that my LCD is going to be t plus 3 times t minus 3. Each of these fractions, I have to rewrite them with my LCD, the first fraction. I can multiply top and bottom by t minus 3. So t times t minus 3 plus the second fraction. I need to go from t minus 3 to my LCD. So I need to multiply this by t plus 3 over t plus 3. So I have 4t times t plus 3. And then I'm subtracting the last fraction. It already has the common denominator. So I simply rewrite the last fraction. And now I can write my common denominator and then combine my numerators. I'm going to multiply out the parentheses, so t squared minus 3t for the second fraction, 4t squared plus 12t minus 18. So if I combine like terms in the numerator, I think I have 3t squared, negative 3t plus 12t plus 9t, and then minus 18 all over t plus 3 times t minus 3. Now some of you might look, I don't believe this numerator is going to factor, or if it does, nothing cancels out. I can even factor out the 3, but it doesn't gain me anything, so I can just leave this as my answer. All right, so that's adding and subtracting rational expressions, hopefully, you can do this on your own now.